Okay, check out this mega nerd shit. So this right here is my computer for selecting what object my train should be unloading at any given time. So uh, it's got a clock here. This keeps, if you look over on the right side, this thing keeps counting up until it reaches 600, uh, which takes 10 seconds um, because it's 60 ticks per second. Uh, we divide that by 120 because we have a period of 120, um, meaning I want like two seconds per resource, like a maximum of two seconds of withdrawing that resource per resource or whatever. And then I add one to it, uh, so it'll always be one through five. And then each of these rows controls a different resource. So we've got copper, iron, coal, stone, brick. Uh, this row of lights, oh my God, hold on. This row of lights right here tells you which resource is currently selected by this clock, uh, one through five. And we've got like a thing here that says if I for index equals one, output S for selected. So I equals three, I equals four, I equals five. Select the row. And then uh, we check against the logistics network if an item is below a limit specified in this uh, combinator, this constant combinator. Um, so if this is selected and it is under this limit, then we output that value into the network, which then gets broadcasted to every single filter and server in here. Um, so if you look on the right side, like underneath the medium electric pole, it's like over here, uh, you can see it outputting these different signals. And then if we go up, I'm not getting my spider drop, so I'm safe. If we go up here, you can see this in action. Uh, I don't know how much the compression is gonna fuck it up, but if you look at the filter inserters, they are all selecting this different item at a time and we reach a maximum if you look on the right side right here, uh, we've got 50,000 iron plates 25,000 so 25,000 brick and then it's constantly struggling for uh, coal and uh, copper plates which I need to add some more input on but so I was I was doing this and it was waiting at things that are full uh, or things where we've hit the limit it was continuing to wait for the full two seconds which just means like it's 10 seconds loop time to cycle through all the different resources. If you need two items, you're only spending 40% of the time actually withdrawing those two items. So I wanted to build something to make it skip through items that hit a limit first. So if it's hitting a limit, that's where this row of lights come in. This light will turn on if the resource is hitting the limit. So stone and brick, we don't use a lot of, so it's constantly hitting the limits. Iron, we've got enough input. So partway through its cycle usually, uh, this light will turn on to mean it's hit its limit. And, and, and once it's hit its limit, so this right here, uh, it checks to see if it is under the limit. So if it's under the limit, uh, if it's under the limit, you will be one. If it is not under the limit, you will be zero. So it's at or above the limit, it'll output an L. Uh, if it is L and S again for selected, so if it's at the limit and we've selected it, then I'll put J for jump, um, and that will increment the counter. So like it's 120 ticks per item. If we get a J signal, if we get a jump signal in here, it increments the counter instead of one per tick, 10 per tick. So it goes through it 10 times faster. So instead of two seconds, it's 0.2 seconds. So these two, because they're full, they cycle through quick. This one, because it's right on the border of full. It has less time on there. And then we spend more time selecting copper and coal. Uh, and it sort of works. I'll, I'll just let it sit here for a second. It's pretty neat. I need to get more copper and coal coming in on these trains, but I'm pretty pleased with this. There you go. That's it. Pretty fun. 